tight fit. Where's a hammer when you need one? I begin this project by breaking down three sheets of three quarter inch oak veneer plywood that are required for this project with my table saw and circular saw. A free set of plans can be downloaded at diybuilds.ca if you're interested in building this yourself. Once everything is cut to width, I utilize a stop block at the miter saw to cut everything to final length. The sides are too long to utilize a stop block, so good old measuring and marking make do. The six shelves receive four pocket holes in both ends for mounting later. Next I can rip to width the back of the shelves. These back pieces will provide the structure of the shelf so they don't sag or rack side to side. This is very important with upwards of 200 pounds of amps sitting on the shelves. At the miter saw, I have a stop block set up to ensure all back support pieces are identical in length. Lastly, I get my super special helper to drill some pocket holes using my homemade pocket hole machine. If you're interested in building my pocket hole machine yourself, and you should be, I have a free set of plans available for download at diybuilds.ca. I then cut a sheet of plywood in half and bring it over to my homemade CNC machine to cut out the two sides of the mobile rack. If you're interested in building my homemade CNC machine, a free set of plans can be downloaded at diybuilds.ca. If you haven't built my homemade CNC machine yet, first of all, I'm very disappointed, but my plans do lay out dimensions to cut these out with a jigsaw. After I chop the tabs holding the side piece in place, I can bring them to the pocket hole machine to add four holes to the tops only. Next I can cut the 19 and a quarter inch cross members, which sets the spacing for the mobile rack and apply edge banding where necessary. I then apply edge banding to the front and back edges of the two sides of the rack. This was a little tricky due to complex curves, but with little patience, I'm able to get some very nice results. After the edge banding has fully cured, I take a razor to the ends and a sharp chisel to trim the overhanging bits on the edges. Next I take a 1x6x6 piece of red oak and begin ripping thin strips to be used for some homemade edge banding. I have the feather board mounted in reverse to create a reference point as I move the fence over after each cut to keep my strips consistent in size. This is a far safer way to make thin strips than running them right next to the fence, especially since I don't have a zero clearance insert in my table saw. I then apply glue to the front of my shelf sides and attach the oak strips with some 23 gauge pin nails. I thought pin nails would be enough to keep the joints closed as the glue dried, but I quickly realized clamps were needed to close the joints. Once the glue is cured for several hours, I trim the ends with the miter saw. I then cut in half the 6 foot sections of strips to be used on the shelf fronts. The strips are glued to only the front of the 6 shelves and the 4 side pieces. The tops and bottoms of the shelves get strips glued onto the sides first, then are trimmed to length once dry. The fronts are then glued in place, overlapping the side edging. Next I cut some scrap oak to width and length to be used for the base of the rack where the casters will attach. These pieces get the corners rounded at the belt sander, and then get a quarter inch round over at the router table. At the table saw, I cut up some more 3 quarter inch plywood. This is the last piece required for the project and will be used as the top of the mobile rack. This is edge banded the same as the shelves, front and back, before being cut to length at the miter saw. After trimming the edges flush, I can then glue on the side pieces of edging. Now that all the pieces are cut and edged, it's time for a marathon of first sanding the edge banding flush, then finish sanding every piece with 240 grit sandpaper. 
This took forever, but was a way better option than trying to sand everything once it was all assembled. Here's a quick overview of all the pieces required for this project. To begin assembly of the shelf, I set up a stop block in my triple screw gear vise at the end of the table. This is used to push the side and spacer flush against as I attach the shelves with pocket screws. The spacer block is a 12 inch square and takes all the guesswork out of installing these shelves. It is important when driving in pocket holes to keep everything held or clamped down securely as they'll want to move on you if you let them. After the shelves are attached, I flip the unit upside down, move the back supports in place, and clamp them down. Again, the clamps prevent movement as the pocket screws suck these pieces together. The side pocket screws are driven in last to ensure a tight bond for the underside of each shelf beforehand. I then lay the shelf on its back and attach the bottom with a few me nails to keep it in place while I come back and permanently attach it with 2 inch screws in countersunk holes. To attach the top I'll use 4 3 8 inch dowels drilled in the sides with my self centering dowel jig. I then clamp the top back support in place while driving in the side pocket screws to ensure the spacing is correct before marking the centers of the dowels in the top. With the center finders installed in two of the dowel holes, I carefully align the edges and give it a good smack to create indents. At the drill press, with my depth set far enough to not blow out the top side, I use a 3 8 inch me point bit and clean out the holes. I then chop up eight dowels at the bandsaw and round the tips at the belt sander. I glue in one side of the dowels only and use these as a reference for marking the dowel centers of the other side of the top. A quick dry fit verifies a good fit of the top and is then removed to add glue to the four holes as well as the edges. I added some clamps to hold the front tight as the pocket screws are driven in the back. Now on to assembling the mobile rack where I have the top facing down and the right side aligned to the edge. I drive in the four pocket screws and use the cross members as a spacer to drive in the left side piece while using a clamp to hold it together. I then work on adding the four cross members to the bottom in the same way, clamping them at first, then driving in several pocket screws. These pieces make up the structure of the rack and also provide an area for cable management. The back cross member is added and the unit is almost done. Over at the drill press I have the two leg pieces which I drill a hole in each end for the casters to slip into. The rack is then placed on the ground and I use my speed square to align the leg pieces to the base of the rack. I keep them in place with a couple of me nails before drilling holes for 2 inch screws for a more permanent bond. Next with a piece of tape attached to my drill bit to act as a depth stop, I drill out the 4 caster holes into the plywood below to make room for the casters. And the casters work great. Next I mount the rack hardware by laying the unit on its side and pushing a block of wood flush with the edge. Then a spacer is added to offset the hardware back into the rack before using a self-centering drill bit and driving in some short screws. More screws will be added after the finishing process. I then take the three pieces outside and blast them with the leaf blower. 
This gets rid of all that loose dust left over from sanding. The stain I used is the same black poly shade from Minwax I used on Glenn's recording studio desk years ago. Once the stain was dry, I sprayed on a coat of water-based, oil-modified, gloss, minwax, polyurethane with my spray gun. This worked less than great, so for coat number two, I tried my HVLP paint gun, which I'm happy to report worked much better. And with that, the project is complete, and I can hand it over to its very angry customer. Moment of truth. <laughs> oh, here we go. Oh, wow, that is amazing. That's great. That's solid enough to actually put something on top. Oh, you don't know how badly I need these. <laughs> <laughs> There's I have, like, no space at the studio at all, so this is this is going to go a long way to... Uh, oh, it rolls! Absolutely incredible, man. Wonderful job. Look at that. That is killer! Wow. Good game.